Mark Henry interviews Jade Cargill and Marina Shafir to plug the main event here. Uh, the best thing about this was, thank goodness Mark Sterling was there. Mm-hmm. Talking about Marina's black belt. I also have a black belt. He says, I got it for $20 on Amazon. He's putting over Jay. She's the hardest working wrestler on earth. She takes every match seriously. As he's saying this, she is dinking around her phone. Can't even be bothered to do the promo. Um, Marina says they have plans, but she is the problem, and problems don't care about plans. And it just kind of went on for a while. So let's talk about this match. All right. All right. Here's the uh, here's the deal. Remember when uh, Scorpio Sky won that title and then the gimmick was he would never defend it and then he just defended it against Sammy and lost? And I was like, what in the fuck was the point of him, him having that title? Remember that I asked that question? Yes, sure. Now I am equally baffled as to why we did a Marina Shafir. Like, why was she number 30? for? Here, Here's the thing. I want to make it abundantly clear. I do not think that Marina Shafir should have won this match or this title. Okay, I don't. And it's weird because what I expected with these two in this match, this was way better than I expected. But I still had so many problems with it. Mm. And I am so baffled afterwards. So the whole point of this story was that Jade Cargill is going to have number 30. Who is it going to be? Marina Shafir ends up being the challenger. Mark Sterling is afraid of Marina Shafir being number 30. But Jade Cargill totally blows it off. She doesn't care. She doesn't know who this is. She doesn't care one bit. She doesn't watch her matches. She's on her phone the whole time. The night of the show, she still doesn't know Marina Shafir's name. Totally blows it off. We've seen this a million times in history. And there's always one ending to this story. And that is, she should have been paying attention. And she gets beaten. Mm Mm-hmm. That did not happen. In the end, she beat her. Jade beat her. Jade yeah. beat her. Clean. Yeah. Yeah. Dominant. So, like, when it was over, I thought, what a burial. Could you bury Marina Shafir any deeper under the earth? She was a challenger. The champion belittled her, didn't care about her, paid no attention to her, thought she was nothing, and then beat her in the match. That's number one. The other thing, if that wasn't enough of a burial poor Marina, is what is Marina Shafir's gimmick? An MMA fighter in a black belt, right? Sure. Yes. So I thought, well, there's one way to do this match. Jade has to go in all cocky, but like Marina is pulling out one submission attempt after another. And, you know, Jade's on the ropes and she's almost getting submitted here and there and everything. And then finally she ekes out a win. And although she won... Marina gave her quite a fight, and she ends with begrudging respect for the woman that she didn't give two fucks about going in, right? Sure. None of that. In fact, like two minutes into this match, Marina's on the mat, and Jay just mounted her. Her whole gimmick is that she is a jujitsu black belt, and she just got mounted like it was nothing. And she's going like this and covering up. And Jade, who has no MMA experience, not even in storyline, she's she's just on there pounding on her from the mount. I was like, oh, my God. And uh, and then at the end, of course, I'm waiting for the one big spot. And they do it. And that is Marina puts her in a an ankle lock, heel hook, whatever she's putting her in. And Jade's stuck and she can't get out. And Jade sells and sells. And then Jade kicks her way free. And you know what they do immediately after this? After she's had her this debilitating leg hold that almost made her submit put on. She stands up on two legs. She grabs her. She lifts her up. She hits her with a move. She pins her. She never sells her leg again. That was it. That was it. So at the end of the day, I loved it. I shouldn't say I loved. It was better than I expected. And I also hated it. Yeah. Like, as a match... As a match, okay, if Jade was just some woman off the street on a random night and they wanted to go back and forth and it's not an MMA gimmick and it's fine. It was like it was way better than I expected. But given who Marina is, the way that the champion treated her, the way they worked the match, I was baffled from start to finish and even when it was over. Am I the only one? Uh, Absolutely not. Okay. Usually when you say am I the only one, the answer is a strong yes. 
But no, I think I think in this case you're speaking for lots of people. So here's the deal with this. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it was good. Good. In any way. For all the reasons you've pointed out, and, and probably many more. But it was such an outrageous styles clash. Because Jade is out there, and she's like a slightly more athletic version of a young Lex Luger. She does a lot of poses, power spot here and there, and more poses. She's 100% showmanship. And while the match was not put together to get over Marina's shooter gimmick, when she's in there, she carries herself strictly like a shooter. Her hands are up at all times. She's in her stance at all times. When Jade turns her back to flex her biceps, Marina throws a leg kick. She's not putting up with this posing bullshit. She's not there. She, she is not a sports entertainer. She's a and fighter. And in, if I can interject just for a second, mm-hmm. Marina is just as tall as Jade and just as thick. Yes. She's not as cut, but this is basically two very large women going to battle. But it was such an outrageous styles clash. Like, I see a lot of matches, and I think this is a good version of a match I've seen many times before. I don't know if I've ever seen a match like Jade Cargill and Marina Shafir before. So I found it, while it wasn't good, I found it fascinating. It was was something different to behold. I was never sure what was going on, and I was never sure what was going to happen next. In a vacuum, it was fine. Like, in a vacuum, if it was just a match on television, and you didn't know her opponent was going to be tonight, and it was just a match they announced or whatever, it would have been fine. But... The build-up, the circumstances, the gimmick, all of that. The main event. Combined for a baffling well, 10 minutes of television. To add on to your point, we'll make it take it to 12 minutes. Because the other part of the storyline is they were going to have the biggest celebration ever, ever for 30-0. and 0. <laughs> right? So she's got her win here. She's 30-0. Now, now, now I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> Wait a second. I think you're wrong. Because he clearly said before the match, when this is over, wait till you see this celebration. <laughs> I got the balloons. Yes, he did say that. And that's exactly what we got. We got exactly but what they, he promised. But they were pushing, but not even a lot of balloons. <laughs> they were building this up for weeks and weeks and I weeks was expect- to just have some green balloons. I thought there was going to be a giant pyro display, and maybe then a new face would come out after the, the thing or something. But It was like three dozen balloons. <laughs> three dozen <Yeah>. balloons. <laughs> they may have been blown up by fans, for all I know. They <laughs> fall from the ce- ceiling. There's a little bit of fake money and a terrible mockery of Oh, the, there was a lot of money. Uh, the, 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 the Bucks entrance and Oka. Entrance. It's awesome all over just one small the, part of the arena. Be yes. awesome if they use the Bucks money. It may have been. I don't know if it's not close up. <laughs> and you know what? You know what? I also have to say this. I don't know if, if Marina is even under contract. She may just be on a on a per date basis That's or whatever. That's a good point. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, was this a great showcase for Jade Cargill? And she looked like a star. Absolutely. So, like, at the end of the day, that was what the thing was meant to accomplish. Whatever, whatever, you know, why they built it up so long, and I don't have any answers to those questions. But at the end of the day, there was one point to the match, and that was Jade Cargill supposed to be a superstar, and, uh, and she soundly defeated this woman, and she got her big celebration, and she looked great. So, you know, from that perspective, it was a big success. Yeah. If you're and Marina, was, it was not a big success. And there was interference. The baddies grabbed a hold of Marina and were chopping That's her true. and dumping popcorn Yes, but on you know her. what? That was another thing I didn't even mention. So early in the match that happened, she ends up outside the ring. Mark Sterling takes the ref, and the baddie section starts throwing popcorn and stuff at her, and they're, they're humiliating her and everything. And I thought, this will lead to a spot later where Jade's on the outside of the ring, and Marina just does a number on these baddies. She, she mm-hmm. just clobbers red velvet or whatever. So what happened actually was she ends up outside of the ring. She starts jaw jacking with them. And then all of a sudden Jade flies in with this jumping oh, yeah. kick yes. and massacred her. So in fact, she did not get her revenge. She was humiliated by the baddies and then distracted by the baddies and got her ass kicked. Yep. So yeah, that all happened. This so, was not a match for Marina. No, no, and uh, but it wasn't supposed to be. So I, I say again, I, I was intrigued, it held my attention, I enjoyed myself. But if you want to tell me that this match sucked, I'm not going to defend it <laughs> at all, at all. So there you go. That was Rampage. It was something else. Hey, I liked the first uh, 45 minutes of the show, and you know, as noted in a vacuum for a Jade Cargill Marina Shafir match. I mean, they did a good job. 
but if you're if you're trying to look at the psychology given the story that was told, it was not good. And but it's good for Jade, not oh, good yeah. for Marina. Rob Bartlett is the man. He tried the best he can. Vince on the new What Rob Bartlett's gonna do to you? Vinny V, Happy Corbin, and Bartlett in a three way. Oh. Here comes the commentator, Rob Bartlett. He's a great imitator of Vince McMahon. Rob, you're the love of my life. Come back to Monday Night Raw and be my wife. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. Is this Rob Bartlett? Guilty as ch- Hey! Oh, look who's here on the show, everybody! There's a star here. Rob, hey, Rob Bartlett is joining us here today. How you doing, Rob? I don't know what to say about this. To actually be proposed to in song was a beautiful thing. <laughs> I couldn't really do much of an impression of him other than the, the tone of the voice, you know? <laughs> he still got it. <laughs> He still got it. I think I had the wrong guy. Well, what, what did you learn about the the Rob Bartlett that you you uh, you checked out? He was an explorer way back when. That's not him. <laughs> well, I don't know. He was born August fifteenth, eighteen seventy five, and so, died you, April twenty eighth, nineteen forty six. He died in okay, but you thought he might be on the show this week. Well, I couldn't figure out why you guys picked him. You're going to go to the Brian and Vinnie Matt Cleary Memorial Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hey. Aye, 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 aye. Well, there he goes. Very aye. prestigious. You get nothing. You've warmed the cockles of my heart. I have warm cockles now. and um, Lucky fella. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm moist. I'll just say that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm moist. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.